Okay, I'm going to um, start today. I, I decided I wanted to cover my motivations, and I'm going to try to keep better track of my clock because um, I try to stay on topic because I've got off topic and then I've gone over my 15 minutes on two videos I've re recorded earlier today, and I'm starting to come with the realization it's going to take me longer to figure out how to snip the Matroska video in half, even if I can do it. Then um, simply doing this again, and I have a little more information than I had before, so that'll probably um, at least I believe I do. It'll probably help. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to talk about why I'm doing what I'm doing, and you know since I've been doing this. Or why did I even start in the first place? Yeah, simply put, I just wanted to have, uh, to start with, I didn't know anything about uh, the philosophical reasons behind the, um, the Free Software Foundation's goals and, and, you know, and motives when I first started. I just basically wanted to have, simply wanted to have uh, another choice as to what operating system we can use in our accounting firm. And I didn't know anything about operating systems. I didn't know that apps made for one operating system isn't going to run in the other, but you know, I found that out pretty quickly. And then I just did everything I could to see if I, how I could get there, and along the way I learned things about the philosophy behind why uh, GNU project was started, you know, circumstances of Linus making his kernel, and uh, what the basic movement is today. And um, my bottom line motive, I'll just say flat out, is that um, I want to be able, within a reasonable amount of time, have the choice to either use Linux or or Windows in, in, in this accounting firm and for the, for the accounting profession or really for, for everybody not just the accounting profession and so what does that entail? well that entails looking into different factors that that, that lead uh, that could lead to success or failure uh, looking at what I've seen in the past that would lead to that success or failure, or, or what is, you know, looking at the progress that has been made over the past oh, six years, and uh, putting it all together and trying to disseminate some information that may be of use to improving my chances of succeeding. Um, <laughs> maybe just one guy and pretty much ignored, I, I, I don't really think I'm going to get that far, but I, I should at least try. Um, now when I did my first video, I, I, I broke down, or I started to break down um, the, my motives from uh, various perspectives, okay, um, and my reactions, or, you know, you know, why I, you know, what my views are from various, various different perspectives. And uh, one thing I thought that I said, or I'm going to say right now, is that when I do these videos, I know it's not just about me. <laughs> um, I know, you know, obviously, you know, I know that Linux is the, the result of a worldwide collaborative effort. Okay. And knowing that and understanding that, and it's not just a collaborative effort. There, there are some people that are actually paid to do this, uh, to put the distribution together, to make certain packages. Some people are, some people aren't. But still, there's enough of just absolute volunteers in there that they're really doing, trying to do a public service. That I, you know, I want to honor that attempt at doing public service. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you want, <laughs> if you want to make the world a better place best thing to do is probably try to support people that have made the world a better place. But when it comes down to supporting people, um, 
there are many different perspectives as to as to how you actually could support the volunteers that that I admire for what they've done. Um, I don't know, I'm going to sound corny, but you call it tough love, I guess? I mean, at the end of the day, any you know, any you want anything that at least has some benevolence behind it to be used as much as possible by other people and not ignored. Right? But for that to happen, you know, I have to actually realistically look at other people's points of view, um, a new user, um, the distributions, the choices the distributions make, the politics involved, and how that affects my experience on the desktop, and my experience is a reflection of other people's experience. So that's why I go into all the things I do, and sometimes I'm I'm angry not only because of the difficulty I deal with, but I'm, I also do have in mind the difficulties other people are going to have. Um, uh, and you know, I'll also want to frame this, this <laughs> conversation. I'm only focusing on the difficulties because I want them to go away so it'll increase <coughs> the number of people that use Linux. Um, I'm not only I'm not just talking about difficulties because all Linux is is a difficult thing to use. Um, that that's not a that's not a complete truth. Um, there are some circumstances when Linux will be difficult to use, and there's been enough of a mix of difficulty over time that I've seen to know why Linux is in the market position that it's in. Uh, I don't think it's 10%, I think it's 5% or less, <laughs> at most. Uh, at least by what I see here uh, in, in California and America, I mean basically it's, it's uh, it's a rarity you'll find some that's even tried it. If you ask 100 people, you might find five. Two of them might stick with it. Um, these are all rough guesses, obviously, right? I'm not doing this because I hate Linux or decide I'm going to bash on it because uh, it didn't work out for me or something like that or I'm not good enough or I don't see the open source light. No, I, I have a very complex analysis and I think I have a very clear picture as to why things are the way they are. Um, <laughs> I'll just say it. <laughs> I have the gumption to say that much. Um, so, I guess I'll start out with the story of Red Hat and I'll tell you why I think it's um, gone the way it has. And it's not going to be anything simplistic like or, or, or so so rationally far <laughs> uh, irrationally far removed from re reality you know, is to be a talk about Adam Smith economics because that's not where I'm going with this. Um, just going to be what I what I've observed. I'll just focus on Red Hat because I have mostly um, access to their financial statements, but I also I also do have access to, uh, or at least I've looked at, uh, Novell's recent financial statements, and I'll I'll talk about it, and I'll, and, I, and I, I'm going to make one. St <laughs> there's going to be one thesis to what I what I say. Um, they could make a difference on Novell's bottom line in one area. I mean, in, in general, Novell's a profitable com company. It yeah, made $55 million uh, first three quarters of the uh, July uh, 09 to June 2010 year-end, I think, if I got that right. 
they have an odd year end. But anyway, the report I'm reading is a nine-month report. And it's not just because of the, the license or whatever fees Microsoft has paid them either. And, you know, let's not get into all, you know, whether we think we're bad guys or good guys. I'm just looking at a more far removed uh, look without getting into the politics in some ways. But in some ways, I am going to get into politics, and I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out some conclusions. So <clears throat> let's just start with Red Hat. So Red Hat was, uh, when they went public, had a tremendous jump in stock price from their offering price to what it ended up at the end of the day, and it's gone down straight since then. And they probably were able to flat, you know, flatten out the line and hold, you know, hold the toe. Maybe I don't know. I haven't seen their stock price recently, but I imagine now that they've stopped um, putting, uh, selling their box sets for Linux for the desktop. That um, if they weren't profitable before, they're they're going to have it now. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, judging by Novell, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, one major, f the first thing. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna juxtapose that with my perceptions of Red Hat when I've dealt with them. Okay, when I've uh, used Red Hat, even up to the or Fedora now, the, the, it's what it is in the in the beta version. When I'm when I use it, I find that the installation doesn't even offer the installation and the post installation doesn't even offer to um, have my AM my ATI ATI Radeon uh, video drivers installed at all. Okay, I'm going to stop. I don't want to lose this. <clears throat> 